what happens when you have something that would fit on this table and it will run your house? Pulling energy from the quantum vacuum or the zero point energy field. You don't need utilities. J.P. Morgan famously was reported to have said to Nikola Tesla when he had a car that had a little antenna on it that was running around where the batteries were charging it themselves. J.P. Morgan said, if we can't put a meter on it, we don't want it. Big bankers. In 1927, there were two billion people in the world. Now there's seven. So of those two billion people, there were very few people living with cars and electricity in their homes and et cetera and so on. Now you have seven billion people and billions more people living on that system, which has become entrenched, bureaucratically built into our funding mechanisms from the state, local, federal level of support and also where there are a lot of very powerful stakeholders. And so from a rational point of view, you'd say, well, these technologies would get us off of oil, gas, nuclear power, no more Fukushima's. But from the point of view of people who are looking at the national security equation from a macroeconomic stability point of view, this is their worst nightmare. 99.9% .9 of the, pup, the people on planet Earth would benefit from this. There is a very, very, it's not the 1%, it's the 0.0000000001% who would not benefit from this because they are the ones sitting atop the petrodollar system, the macroeconomic order. And particularly the fact that it is run, and everything we're using is run, on a metered, linear energy source. So I, I want to first give you sort of the big picture. And the big picture is that we haven't needed fossil fuels since about 100 years ago. This building was built in 1913, certainly by then. Tesla, Faraday, Maxwell, particularly the maxwell Quaternion equations, has resulted in us having a energy sector that requires us to burn something or heat something up to create steam to get us electricity or to run our cars. However, a hundred years really advanced physics, which weren't that well understood a hundred years ago in terms of very high voltage systems at certain resonant high hertz, they call it, cycles per second, would result in this excess power. Then it was observed by Faraday and it was observed by Tesla and it was observed by many others and said, where is this coming from? Professor Dirac, D-I-R-A-C, so well, he called it the Dirac Sea. And of course, Tesla called it the, 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 the Sea of the Ocean of Infinite Energy. And it's been called various things. The modern term is the zero point energy field. So if you create this kind of vector into the zero point energy field, and you create a certain counter rotating vortex, let's call it, you get what's called lift and you get a phenomenon that's known as electromagnetic gravitics. This is, this is the key thing that people have to understand uh, and began to be studied. Now, in the early days, let's go back to the time of Tesla, they were observing with usually DC power systems, direct current as opposed to alternating current, which we use in our homes, which Nikola Tesla invented, that would have this effect where a certain amount of energy would go into a system, more would come out. However, as J.P. Morgan famously was reported to have said to Nikola Tesla when he had a car that had a little antenna on it that was running around where the batteries were charging it themselves, J.P. Morgan said, if we can't put a meter on it, we don't want it. Big bankers. Now, 100 years ago or 90 years ago, to today, nothing's really changed in terms of the geopolitical, financial, macroeconomic exigencies. And that's the huge problem. Is there a technical challenge? Yes. And we'll get into how we can, we, we can mount a, a sort of effort together to come up with a, a modern day version of, of what Tesla had. But the geopolitical, macroeconomic policy issue 
is the big problem. And it isn't just because there are a few bankers and kleptocrats that are misanthropic sociopaths, although some of them are. Um, it's because there are a lot of stakeholders who don't want to have to deal with the change. But even if you don't accept that in your paradigm, the inhumanity of keeping these sciences and technologies away from the public and the poverty that it engenders. Because I was talking to an industrialist from India and he was telling me it would take trillions of dollars to properly electrify the subcontinent so that people have the, the energy they need using the, today's conventional systems, even solar, even wind, even coal. And, you know, we're looking, facing a situation now that every year or two there's a thousand new coal-fired burning uh, power plants being put online in India, China, and elsewhere, mostly without any scrubbers. And you look at the air in, in Beijing and Shanghai and other cities, it's, it's, it's not breathable. Then you go to the oceans, where you have the Fukushima reactor releasing all this radioactive material, and huge parts of the oceans, because there's all the CO2 going into the oceans, are beginning to die because of the acidity and alkaline levels being upset. But who's going to fix it? This, this is really the crux of the problem. Now many people have asked me, given the folks I've met with over the years, why doesn't someone do that? But see, everyone says that. My wife and I this week were just up in New York meeting with the head of a foundation. And the question came up frequently with people there, all of whom were incredibly wealthy. Well, why doesn't Bill Gates do it? Or why doesn't the president? It's always, why doesn't someone else? Of course, if you go to the president, he'll say, <laughs> no way, Jose. And if you go to billionaire X and billionaire Y and billionaire Z, many of whom I've met with, they'll go, you know, one of them once said to me, we all want to be first to be second. Great expression, you hear it a lot in business when it's a very controversial science. No one wants to be the first to stick their neck out. So this becomes then a leadership issue, which is what I've tried to provide unclarity to.